Hello. In this video, we will learn about transport proteins, which include pumps, channels, and carriers. Let's get started. In the video on biological membrane, we have seen that the membrane is made up of lipids. Lipid soluble substances like oxygen and carbon dioxide can dissolve in the membrane and therefore can cross through the membrane itself. However, lipid insoluble substances like sodium and potassium ions cannot dissolve in the membrane and therefore cannot cross it. Some molecules like glucose are simply too large to penetrate the membrane. So for such substances, we have various transport proteins on the membrane. They create a passage in the membrane for the movement of such substances. All the transport proteins are transmembrane. This means they go through and through the membrane. Well, they have to to create a through and through passage. There is no other option. There are three main types of transport proteins. Pumps, channels and carriers. Let's see each type one by one. First, pumps. Their speciality is to move substances uphill against their electrochemical gradient. For this, they use energy from ATP. For example, sodium potassium ATPase pump. Sodium concentration is higher outside and lower inside the cell. But these pumps move the sodium outside the cell using energy from ATP. This type of transport is called primary active transport. So this was about pumps. Now let's see channels. They simply provide continuous passage through the membrane just like a tunnel. Ions can freely diffuse through this passage. Thus movement through channels is passive down the electrochemical gradient. And channels are often selective for a particular type of ion. Now the channels can be of two types. Pores and gated channels. Pores are always open. For example, porin, nuclear power complex and aquaporin. Gated channels on the other hand are not always open. They have gates that control the opening or closing of the channel. When the gate is closed, ions cannot move through it. But when the gate opens, multiple ions can flow through its pore simultaneously. These gates in turn are controlled by ligands or voltage. Respective channels are called ligand gated channel and voltage gated channel. Ligand gated channels open or close depending on binding of certain ligands. For example, sodium channels at the muscle end plate open on binding of acetylcholine. In voltage gated channels, voltage across the membrane controls opening or closing of the channel. For example, voltage gated calcium channels in the heart opens when the membrane depolarizes to a certain level. So this was about channels. Now let's talk about carriers. They never provide continuous passage. They have at least two gates and both never open at the same time. They first open at one side, binds with a molecule that they transport, closes from that side, opens on the other side and release the molecule on that side. They go through this cycle again and again to transport more molecules. Because of this lengthy process, the rate of transport through a carrier is lower than through the channels. Now carriers can be of three types. Uniporters, symporters and antiporters. Uniporters move a single type of substance down its electrochemical gradient. For example, glucose transporters move glucose down the concentration gradient. Other example of uniporters is urea transporters. Now symporters and antiporters. They move one type of molecule downhill and utilize the energy from their movement to move other type of molecules uphill. In symporters, both these substances move in the same direction. For example, sodium glucose co-transporter in the apical membrane of proximal tubule. Here, sodium concentration is high in the lumen as compared to inside the cell and glucose concentration is higher inside as compared to the lumen. This co-transporter couples the movement of glucose with downhill movement of sodium. So glucose is moved uphill. This type of transport is called secondary active transport. 
Another example of co-transporter is sodium potassium chloride co-transporter at apical membrane of thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Now antiporters. They move molecules in opposite directions. For example, sodium calcium exchanger. Sodium and calcium both have higher concentration outside the cell as compared to the inside. Again, uphill movement of calcium is energized by downhill movement of sodium into the cell. But calcium is moving out of the cell. Means ions are moving in opposite direction and thus the name is exchanger. So this was all about transport proteins. Now let's have a quick summary. Transport proteins create a passage for lipid insoluble and larger molecules to cross the biological membrane. They can be pumps, channels or carriers. Pumps use energy from ATP to drive the primary active transport of a substance against its electrochemical gradient. Channels provide continuous passage for passive diffusion down the electrochemical gradient. Diffusion through channels is faster as multiple ions can pass through the channel during each opening. Pores are always open and gated channels switch between open and closed states. Carriers do not provide continuous passage. Movement through them is relatively slow. Uniporters move a single type of substance down its electrochemical gradient. Symporters move one substance downhill and uses its energy to move other substance uphill in the same direction. Antiporters also move one substance downhill and uses its energy to move other substance uphill but in opposite direction. That's it for this video. If you feel this video will help your friends and colleagues, please share it with them too. And don't forget to subscribe because lots more to come. At Nonstop Neuron, learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.